Well, everyone, good morning. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. It's Tuesday, and that means it's 10 thrift shops in one day. I started early, and I'm so excited because the uh, Speedway, where I usually stop and get my coffee, they used to sell uh, some brand of coffee, and something happened. They lost the contract, and there was just been no coffee there since, like, last March. Well, I st stopped today because the lady said that they would be having coffee for the first time today, and I found out today is National Coffee Day. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Anyway, this was free, so I was so excited. That means it's going to be a great day. Okay, it's 15 minutes before the store opens. I'm going to enjoy this coffee and just sit here and soak up the early morning, cool autumn air. Although I'm hanging on to my short sleeves as long as I can. And we're going to hit 10 thrift shops. Now I may not be able to film in all of them. Because sometimes the music is loud. Or people are breathing down your neck trying to grab the carnival glass before you get there. But I'll do my best. I'll show you some of the things I hope to buy today. And others I'll keep secret until the kitchen counter thrift hall. So stay tuned. It's going to be fun. I'm glad you decided to join me. Let's go. Well, look at these. I've never seen these before. <clears throat> they're, they're tall mugs and they definitely have a mid-century design on them. I mean, that's right out of the 1960s. Look at the barbecue fork there with the sausage and the coffee pot and the ham on the spit. Boy, this looks just so totally 1960s. I'm trying to look through the look through to see if I see any, anything like Libby. Uh, gosh, they're in such good condition. Well, I'm going to put these in my cart and then make a decision in a little bit. But I've really never seen this before. Okay, let's put these in the cart. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I think I see maybe three or four more down there. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, this is exciting. Look, everybody. Can you believe it? And they're sitting right here, and I just am shocked. Both of these are made by Anchor Hawking. Both of these are made by Anchor Hawking. Look at the wonderful original green lid. This one is clear, and it is only $3. This one is earlier. It's also Hawking, and it's wonderful 1930s green glass. And you're going to see right here... That diagonal smooth section is where there was a paper label. Now you can get reproductions for these labels. And this would either say tea, coffee, cookies, sugar, cat treats, so forth. And this has an, also an old lid. And this one is $3.49. <laughs> I feel like I need to put these in my cart and run to the car. I can't believe it! Alright, I also have some piano babies. And I did purchase, or I'm about to, these wonderful barbecue mugs, which I'm pretty certain are Hazel Atlas. Now, they're not marked Continental Can Company uh, or Hazel Atlas on the bottom, but they sure do look like it. Let's grab this other one. I try not to say grab. <laughs> Just let me let me grab it. Wow, this is exciting. So you saw these. You saw me thrift these, and uh, I'll talk about the babies later. Well, I'm gonna keep shopping. Don't quit now. My goodness, that was exciting. Now these I recognize as Hazel Atlas Platinite. And somebody's ripped the sticker off that to try to find out if it was branded on the back. But uh, one of the signs of Platinite, turn this upside down. Do you see there's a, uh, a ring? You see that ring underneath the purple sticker? In the shape of a circle? 
for whatever reason that shows up on the bottom of platinite and it shows up on almost every piece of platinite I've ever seen so these are $1.99 I don't think they're on sale uh, but I may buy them although that one has a little chip on the top and that one has a chip on the top too so maybe not uh, Platinite Hazel Atlas 1950s. And still, lots of nice china. Figural plates. I think I see a lot of desert rose down here. Franciscan. Some more luster wear. <clears throat> This is pretty. Well, I can't really see the mark on that, but I'd like to know who made it. Never seen it before. I see, what do I see on there? Bavaria? I think I see Bavaria. Those are pretty, those plates. Look at this. Yeah, these collector type plates are produced in very high volume so there wouldn't be much value there there's the Franciscan uh, there's usually plenty of this online let's see if it's the old stuff or the English no it's the older made in USA prices probably aren't too bad but I really don't need to take home any more dishes. But not bad. Clear glass. It's a very sort of 1950s looking ashtray in kind of a deco pattern. It has a hunk out of the side of it. So we'll put that back. silver plate oh good heavens no hmm come on mrs. Roper come pick up your sofa mm-hmm mm-hmm you remember these all right let's see what's what I am in the uh, in a where am I? I'm in a goodwill store in uh, West Philadelphia where I was not born and raised. Uh, oh, wait a minute, what's this? Uh, fudge. See, I saw that blue and I thought, ooh, Maxfield Parish. Now, what are my colors? Yellow and purple. Yellow and purple. Somebody put this dish down in the wrong spot. 349. Hmm. Yellow and purple. All right, let's see here. Uh, nope.
Well, I'm back in the voiceover studio just because it's a little easier. Now we're coming up on what looks like peach luster, but remember when it's in dinnerware, I'm sorry, when it's in bakeware, Fire King referred to it as copper tone. It just went out of view, but it had a lot of loss. That copper tone spray, that peach luster spray comes off. If you scrub it too hard, there is some bubble in the sapphire blue color. I actually purchased uh, many pieces of it. Uh, let's see, did I buy the ones in this particular store? I don't remember, but I've got lots of it, which I'm gonna be auctioning off very soon. It's still a very popular pattern, and I find it frequently in the, in the sapphire blue color, which seems to be pretty popular, but Anchor Hawking made it in clear and in some other colors as well. You'll see a chrome base there to a casserole dish or a caddy, which didn't seem to be much. I was attracted to the pattern on this 1930s, 40s era uh, American dinnerware, but it's just random pieces and I decided not to buy it. It's a pretty pattern. Now let's see, there's a, well, you just, I walked by that little uh, mug in, uh, what do you call it? Jasperware. Now I picked this up not because I was interested in it, but because I wanted to show you, uh, that's a 1960s, 70s piece of, I think either Jeanette or Indiana made that, I don't remember, but it's that, uh, what I call second generation carnival glass does not compare to the old stuff. Oh, there's the Wedgwood piece right there, which was pretty dirty. The, the, the white uh, relief, is it relief? Well, there's quite a crack in that one. Uh, the Wedgwood gets pretty dirty. So anyway, also I didn't, I didn't buy that 60s carnival glass. There's lots of it out there and I find it to be inferior to the old stuff. The quality just isn't the same. It's still pretty. And I'm sure plenty of folks uh, enjoy it. What is this thing? Is it California pottery? Uh, California art? I think it's one of those California pieces. Um, but is that what it says? California art? I, I can't see. I didn't buy it. It was kind of brown. This was cute. Little Halloween mug with the cat on it. A new piece, of course, from Williams and Sonoma. Now, let's see. On this side, the usual forgotten crock pots. There's a piece of enamelware down there. Those were little wooden Amish pieces of no uh, significance. Some plastic, this and that. I don't know why I'm looking at the suits. We're not here shopping for back to school clothing. Mm, I think it was somewhat uh, a lackluster event in this particular store. Now, you guys are gonna get mad. I actually, <laughs> I put this back. Um, yeah, this is, and it was chip free. There was nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. It's one of those, I think Jeanette made that one. Westmoreland made them. What do you call them? Brides boxes or something like that. I had put it down in my car and I've bought and sold those before. Uh, I don't know. Well, here are two old lamps to talk about. This first one over here is made of hammered copper. It's missing its original shade and the socket has been replaced. The shade that went on the top was a clip-on shade also made of hammered copper and it sort of looked like a helmet. It's missing, uh, and uh, but this, what's left here is only $2.99. So at $2.99 I'm probably going to go ahead and buy it anyway and rewire it, put an old socket on it and wait to find a shade that matches it or just come up with something else. 
And then here's a pottery uh, base to a lamp that looks like it's going to date to the 19, probably the early 40s, late 30s to early 40s. It looks like a McCoy glaze and a McCoy color, but I'm not familiar with this particular shape. So I don't know that it's McCoy. They've put a brand new spacer and a new socket. This has all been redone. And uh, there's no mark on the bottom. But there's no damage on it. And it's only $6.50. So I'm pretty certain I'm going to buy this. I know I'm going to buy this. Okay. Here's a great deal, $49 for a solid oak dresser with the mirror that goes on the top. This is going to date to around 1900. It's got its original finish. It's going to take a little bit of work to bring it back to glory, but it's a, just a beautiful old antique. You can't really see the mirror. The cardboard is in front of it. Let me try to get close up so you can see some detail. This is definitely 1890s, 1910, turn of the century beautiful piece. This stuff used to be very popular. Well everyone, I have just left store number three. And I've been able to film just a little bit in the first store and the second store. I so far have found some wonderful things, but even more important than that, because remember, things are things. People. And I met some wonderful folks this morning. <clears throat> in the first store, I met two subscribers. And they're more than just subscribers, they're very nice people. Carl and Lynn. And I'm so glad that Carl and Lynn came up and spoke to me. We chatted for about 10 minutes. Carl had some nice vintage Christmas tumblers in his cart that I was spying. But anyway, they gave me a great tip on a couple of shows coming up and some local spots to thrift uh, where, where I can go thrifting. And I didn't know about these places before. So I networked a little bit and met two very nice people. Hello, Carl and Lynn. So glad to meet you guys this morning. And then in my second store, I met a nice man who doesn't know who I am and I don't know who he is, but we had a wonderful conversation. He saw something in my cart and it struck up a conversation between the two of us. A very nice man named Francisco, a retired gentleman who enjoys going out junking like I do. And um, so it was really nice to meet three people this morning and have wonderful conversations with all of them. So I have just stopped and had some lunch. I didn't pack mine today. I'm getting ready to stop at my third shop and it's already half past noon. So I better move it. You've seen some of the things I bought, but most of it you're going to have to wait and tune in tomorrow for the full thrift haul. But I still have a whole bunch of shops to go to, so stay with me. Thanks for tuning in. So let's get busy. Okay. Okay, I am finding the mother load of depression glass. Am I getting steamed up? <sighs> oh my goodness. So I really didn't do any filming in here because there was so much wonderful glass. I just had to shove it in my shopping cart. Okay, you're going to love it. Well, as the song says, it's beginning to look a lot like it. I'm not sure I'm ready for it yet. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Okay, let's go over here. Now, what are my colors? Oh, I've forgotten already. Isn't that awful? You guys told me to take a picture of it, and I didn't do it. So let's go back. Uh, green and yellow, green and yellow. Okay, green and yellow. Let's start all over again. 
green and yellow. Well, he's very 1950s looking, a candle holder made in Japan. There's only one, but I'm going to purchase him anyway. That's a very nice face, and he's in good shape. Well, here are two old jewelry boxes that date to the Depression era. One very elegant and probably would appeal to the lady of the house. And this one much more masculine in the shape of a treasure chest, which might be on a man's bureau. Now this one, very typical gilded frame made of wood with a cardboard picture on the front. And if we open it, there's the divided space for jewelry and whatnot. And there is a mirror up there on the top, which you can see. Okay, see, I'm here. It's really me. There I am. And uh, then this one here, oftentimes when, um, a, a, when a large hope chest was purchased, cedar chest, these were sometimes given away as a gift, as a premium when you bought a larger uh, cedar chest. And those hope chests were quintessential uh, gifts usually to uh, young girls when they graduated from high school or when they turned 16 or 18. It's called their hope chest. And they would keep that until they got married. Uh, my grandmother got one in 1933 and um, it's in my mother's house right now. So this one is made of cedar and uh, just it smells wonderful. It has a wonderful old finish. I like the handles on this. Well, let's get it out where you can see it. You can have it monogrammed on the top, inscribed. It's in really wonderful condition, old condition, just the way I like it. And so I'm gonna buy this. Now I might actually keep it and use it for myself on the dresser. Again, that's gonna date to probably right around 1933, 35, something like that. And then this one also right out of the 1930s, and it's in beautiful original condition as well. So let's check the price. That one is $7, which, eh, you know, this isn't a huge money maker, but it's in nice condition, so I can't leave it here. And I'm excited to tell you, it pays off to really go through the uh, aisles twice because I found the second Santa candle holder. Fantastic. And this wonderful sort of 1950s skunk. Now he has a spot in the back. I'm not really sure what that's for. I'm gonna have to think about this. I don't know. There's the label. So I'm gonna have to look this up and see. Perhaps you put the, the uh, renews it air freshener type things in the back. I'm not sure. Well, everyone, this is an abrupt switch. As usual, I forgot to record a so long and farewell. Uh, many times I simply forget to do that. 
But I want to thank you for watching and uh, I didn't show you everything that I found on this particular shopping trip. So you'll just have to tune back in for a kitchen counter thrift haul and you'll see the other goodies that I discovered uh, last Tuesday when I was filming all of this. Now, I happen to mention in the film uh, a hope chest or cedar chest that my grandmother received when she graduated from high school in 1933. Here she is. Of course, this is before I was born. This is around the time... Well, this was taken during the war. And this is when uh, she was uh, had been uh, she married my grandfather. They were high school sweethearts, and um, they met in 1929. They graduated from high school together in 1933, which was a pretty dismal year uh, in the early days of the of the depression. And so they waited until 1936 to get married. And then they had their three children, including, of course, my mother. So this is my maternal grandmother. And I'm happy to say that uh, we have her cedar chest that was given to her by her parents in 1933. And it was a place to keep uh, blankets and handkerchief sachets and linens and things that uh, the young woman would take with her when she got married. It's kind of an old-fashioned custom, but your mothers and grandmothers had the same thing. Everybody did in those days. But we've got the old cedar chest. My mother uses it now uh, in her home. And uh, I suppose we'll just pass it on. Well, I wanted to share that photograph with you. Uh, her first name was Matilda. Uh, she had seven grandchildren. And we loved her very much. She was born in 1915 and died in the year 2000. So we had her for 85 years. And she was something else I will tell you. And now here she is in her later years. And this is really how I remember her. You know, she used to wear these old house dresses that she used to get. Oh, she wouldn't really spend much money on herself, but she would give every nickel she had for her children or grandchildren. But here she is, probably smelling like a combination of Johnson's floor wax, apple pie, and pipe tobacco, smoked by somebody, not her, but you know how it was back in those days. So we used to call her Grammy, G-R-A-M-M-Y. And uh, we, all of us children, grandchildren, loved her very much, miss her very much. But I just wanted to share two pictures of my grandmother with you, one of my grandmothers with you. And, uh, and also say uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I believe this video goes live on Friday, so have yourselves a safe and enjoyable weekend, I hope. This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.